And now she's starting to look real sexy with the liquid cooling unit. And then of course the 1080 Ti Founders Edition. Now we're gonna start doing cabling, but we're first going to finish off plugging in the, G the liquid cooling unit. So this needs to connect down here and let me bring you down there so I can show you. So this is the bottom right here. Right here is where you're going to connect that cable. Let me zoom in for you. So the connection is right here. So we grab this USB cable that it brings and we just plug it in right here. So now what we're going to have to do is bring it around the back just to make it look nice. And we're gonna have it hug the memory there. But then we bring it around the bottom of the case. And let me zoom out so you can see it. Okay, so I brought it right around here. It's going to hug the memory. Or maybe I could just bring it around up here. Yeah, and what I'll do is I'll go ahead and attach it to the fan cables if it reaches. And bring it around the back. A little bit down here. See that coming out right there? And I'm going to attach it to the single USB 2.0 header. Now, they could have added another CP, uh, USB header right here, so that that way we can have one for this guy and then one for the front panel header. So now we're down to one front, no front panel headers uh, for USB 2, only for USB 3, which is right here. And they give you two. So that's not a bad thing. So I'll just go ahead and connect it up here. It's not a bad thing, of course, if you have two USB 3.0 headers, but we don't on this case. All right, there you go. So now, again, I'm going to make the cabling on the top look a little bit nicer. I have it coming up here all around here and then I'm going to lift it so that it goes with that with the fan cable a little bit. I took out the EVGA GeForce GTX 1080 Ti again so that I could show you down here. Uh, I'll go ahead and put that back in then. Again, really easy. I'm gonna go ahead and start off with the SATA connections. You can see right here, there's one or zero, one, two, three, and then four and five here, or zero, yeah. So there's six connections, good. I have six hard drives, four SSDs and two mechanical drives. So EVGA provides two SATA cables. I'm going to go ahead and use those first. I'm going to plug that into, let's plug that in down here to make it easier to cable. Okay, so if you remember, last time I built with this case, with the EATX board, this was all the way flat. I could not fit anything but the bottom cables. But now you'll see with this particular board, since it is just an ATX board, not as wide, I can fit the other SATA cables and they look very nice, pretty hidden I would say. Okay, so these two are going to be for these two SSDs up here. I'll just set those aside and then I'll go ahead and connect the other ones just to get that out of the way.
Okay, by the way, this top one is not only for regular SATA, it's also for SATA Express, which is a wide connector. One connector takes up the entire bottom piece, the other one takes up the top piece. But you can also connect regular SATA. And then we're gonna go ahead and use these bottom ones as well. We're not gonna connect them to the drives just yet but so that we have that connection here. Much easier than my last build, a lot quicker too. And I would say it looks very nice there, just hidden out of the way. Now let's go ahead and connect these bottom headers here, starting with USB 3. That we're gonna feed through the back, through the bottom, right here, and then connect it right here easy enough okay and now we'll go to the front panel header the power switch reset switch the uh, HD LED or LED should I say and the power LED and just like we did with the USB 3 header just sneak them in under here Okay, let's go for the power LED first. Okay, and you have to look closely, but it'll show which side's positive and which side's negative. Just like right on here, negative and positive. All right, that's connected there. And then right below that is the power switch. We have that right here. Okay, we connect that, and then the reset switch. And then lastly, we have the hard drive activity LED. All right, we're all set. So now all I'm going to do is just pull the extra slack out. Don't pull too hard because then you'll disconnect what you just connected. Okay, and now we're going to go ahead and connect the front panel audio header all the way back here. Now you'll notice because of this power shroud, this six pin PCIe that provides extra power to the PCIe slots if needed is blocked off. But because we're not gonna be doing tri-SLI or even SLI, we don't need the additional power, but that's something definitely to look out just in case. And HD audio, just like the other front panel headers, we'll bring in under here. And we'll slide it just below the front panel headers, just to hide it a little bit better and also below the uh, liquid cooling units uh, USB 2.0 header. Okay. And just like we did before, just tug on the extra slack. There we go. Now we have all of the front panel headers and don't worry about the mess. We're going to clean it up, but uh, just connecting everything right now. So now we have the front panel headers the front panel audio, the liquid cooling units USB 2.0 header, the front panel LED power reset headers, and the USB 3.0 header, and we have the SATA connections. So now let's go ahead and connect the 24 pin power connector right back here. So we'll just move all these extra cables out of the way. And actually that's a good way to hide this uh, USB one that comes for the liquid cooling unit. I'll show you what I mean in just one second. Okay, so now we'll feed it through up here. And again, because the motherboard is shorter, it's an ATX board, not as wide I mean, 
It looks a lot better. Okay, so now we'll just connect the 24 pin right here. And then we'll also put that USB connection just in front of it. Oh, this is reversed. Just in front of it. So that way it hides it a little bit better. Okay, so that's connected. Now we just need to make it look nice. Some sleeving definitely will help, but if anything, it works. Okay, and then from there, we can just attach that USB cable with a zip tie maybe, and keep it more out of sight. And now let's go ahead and connect the SSDs. So first off, we'll unscrew these guys. And now we'll bring up those two SATA connections that we originally connected. We'll bring those up right down here in the hole the case provides. There's one. And there's the other. And now we have to bring over the power connections, SATA power. And I'm bringing out three just in case. We can always feed it back down. Okay, so now that we have that, we're gonna go ahead and connect the first one. Real simple connection just right in there. That is the SATA data, data cable. And now we'll go ahead and connect the power to it. Let's try. Okay, simple connection. And now we'll connect the other one. So the reason I brought three is, you see how this one probably won't reach? This one will. So what we'll do is, we'll connect the first off the SATA data cable, just like we did before. And now we'll connect the other SATA power cable now we'll pull the extra slack from this cable and now we'll feed this cable or not feed it but just hide it a little tiny bit the extra uh, connection that we have there <clears throat> so now we'll go ahead and pull that SATA cable down out of there so it won't stick out like a sore thumb. That looks pretty good. Not perfect, but we'll get it perfect a little bit later on. So now we'll come around to the back. All right, so then now we're going to go ahead and connect these two SSDs and these two mechanical drives. So first what we'll do is we'll disconnect these, or should I say unscrew these. All right, so then we're actually using an extension, a splitter here. So what we're going to do is just connect this one here. Actually, we'll also connect the SATA data cable. Which will be...
this one right here. Then we'll go ahead and just put this here. Put this here so that that 8 pin PCIe cable doesn't mess up the uh, SATA ports. There we go. Now we're going to connect the other one to the other end of that SATA extension uh, power cable. And now the other SATA cable. right there okay so now we connect that extension to the SATA power right here mind you this is all going to look a little sloppy right now I'm just showing you the basic cabling and then I'll go ahead and clean it up off video because it's going to take so long. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect or unscrew this top mechanical hard drive and the bottom one. Okay, and now I'm going to grab another one of those SATA power extension cables and connect it to the top one. The top one has the most room since it's right here at the edge. I can get one of these and just plug it in right here. and then screw it in right here and then I'll go ahead and plug in the SATA data cable or data cable however you want to say it just going to push it over here just for right now I'll fix it up a little bit later on And now with this one, we'll go ahead and plug that in to this one that's a little bit more difficult because of the way we had to place it. And just to make it easier on myself, I'm going to plug in that side of data cable too. Alright, so we can see here now they're both plugged in, even though they are a little bit awkward, but they're both plugged in. Go ahead and screw this guy in now. Now I just gotta hide all these cables. But lastly, and again, I'm just doing basic cabling right now. I will clean it up a lot later on off video, but then I'll show you. And flash forward time how it looks when it's done let me plug this guy back in and then plug in the PCIe power Okay, and now you basic you have a working computer. Uh, mind you, you have to install Windows, which we'll go over that a little bit later on. But aside from that, everything works. So now 
we are going to clean this up too right there you can see how messy that looks in a little bit when we're closer to being done we'll go ahead and install the power link from our friends again at EVGA and I'll show you how that cleans up the cabling alright guys here she is all cabled not perfect but not bad either so go ahead turn it around for you guys so you can see the back the back is not perfect either but it's not bad it's a lot cleaner than what it was before all right so next what I'm going to do around the front and while it doesn't look horrible it doesn't look amazing you'll notice these yellow PCIe cables coming along the side there I'm gonna attempt to get rid of them with EVGA's power link power link allows me to plug right in there and then have the plugs along the side see how definitely I'll see how that looks and of course I'll come back to you guys and put it on video anyway this is Iggy with Dragon Blogger showing you how to build a PC with the EVGA Z270 FTW K motherboard with the HyperX 3333 megahertz DDR4 16 gig kit that's 2 by 8 gig modules again running at 3333 megahertz DDR4 an EVGA closed loop CPU cooler radiator EVGA closed loop CPU cooler this particular one is the 280 millimeter by 140 millimeter CPU cooler EVGA GeForce GTX 1080 Ti Founders Edition video card Iggy with Dragon Blogger out see you guys in the description below please find the links to all the products in this video